Now, didn't you say that was it? Is it Michael Landon uh, bought some of that property and was making films there? Yes, he bought the property adjacent to there, and there's been comments from people on blogs that knew some of the uh, actresses that were in Little House on the Prairie. Bonanza um, was filmed filmed in the series. There's been a number of films. Um, Men in Black had filmed a scene there. But Little House on the Prairie had been there for quite a while, and, and people who worked on that cast reported that there were a large number of people that also came down with illnesses. But that had not been publicized. This is just comments on blogs from people that know the actors and actresses that worked on Little House on the Prairie. Michael Landon himself died of pancreatic cancer. This appeared in January 13th of 2009 in Mental Floss. In 1991, Michael Landon was hospitalized for what he thought might be an ulcer. Sadly, medical tests revealed cancerous tumors in both his liver and pancreas. Landon had been a heavy drinker and smoker throughout his life. Multiplier effect. So although the diagnosis was shocking, it wasn't totally unexpected. However, several years after Little House had stopped filming, many crew members were also diagnosed with rare forms of cancer. Little House on the Prairie had been filmed on the Paramount Movie Ranch near Chatsworth, California. Recent studies have turned up previously suppressed reports that the entire Simi Valley area was exposed to what has been labeled the worst environmental release of radioactivity ever in the United States courtesy of an experimental sodium-cooled nuclear reactor operated at the time by Rocketdyne Corporation. Uh, Dr. Patrick Swayze, who also grew up in the Simi Valley area, it says currently suffers from pancreatic cancer. He's now passed away. And Motley Crue singer Vince Neal, who lived in Chatsworth for many years, lost his four-year-old daughter to a rare form of stomach cancer. They're not the only Hollywood celebrities who were exposed. There, um, there were atomic veterans. Steve McQueen was one of them who were sent out to the Nevada test site by the thousands, and uh, they were put in, in fox trenches or just they just sat on the ground uh, a thousand feet from the nuclear bomb explosion, the test site. And um, they, they were just they had to sit there when the nuclear bomb went off and have all this radioactive debris fall down on them. And, of course, Steve McQueen died of leukemia. Um, Even Canada sent a number of uh, atomic veterans or, or their own soldiers, personnel, to the Nevada test site to be exposed to nuclear bomb tests. I... I... There's just no morality at all with nuclear materials. There's no morality at all. It's definitely uh, being used to depopulate uh, large numbers of of population and uh, certain targeted groups. And, of course, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen of England, owns the mineral rights to the entire Commonwealth. That's every country, 27 countries in the Commonwealth. Uh, When you buy land there, you're only buying the top 12 inches of dirt. She owns everything below the top 12 inches from the surface. And she owns most of the the uranium mines in the world. She certainly owns a very, very large percentage. So who is benefiting from this nuclear nightmare? That money's going straight into Queen Elizabeth's pocket. I think she's one of the most evil people on this planet. Um, I just brought up an article about Patrick Swayze, too. He died at the age of 57. He was diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer or intraductal papillary muconous neoplasm which metastasized to his stomach and liver. He was very secretive about how severe the cancer was. He died two years after his diagnosis, and that's something that I keep seeing reoccur to in these cases that may be linked to nuclear fallout. People suffer from very, very aggressive 
forms of cancer, cancer in multiple, many times multiple organs. I believe John Wayne had it in his stomach and esophagus. He, he had it in several. Well, see, that's immune system damage because everyone has cancer in their bodies. It's a healthy immune system that suppresses the cancer um, so that it cannot lose its uh, growth control mechanism. And um, there it is. It's, it's damage to the immune system. But what I've been noticing is that in older people, as compared to these younger celebrities we discussed earlier, the older people are dying from heart attacks, from heart disease. Elizabeth Taylor died from heart disease. She, she shouldn't have died of heart disease. She was exposed to all kinds of radiation in Los Angeles from bomb testing in the nuclear power plants and, and the depleted uranium and fission products from Iraq and Afghanistan. No wonder she died from heart, heart disease. And then um, other uh, celebrities, older celebrities, these are in their 60s and 70s. A lot of them have pancreatic cancer or uh, mostly pancreatic cancer. And that is probably damage to the endocrine system, the thyroid pituitary adrenal gland. And the adrenal gland is right above the pancreas. But it could also be immune system damage, but why does it keep happening in the pancreas? I think it's probably related to endocrine damage. Now, comparing the thyroiditis increase uh, caused by Fukushima to the Chernobyl rate and occurrence incidence of thyroiditis, uh, the Chernobyl exposures in Belarus and, and uh, around the, the Chernobyl plant, the immediate vicinity, uh, thyroiditis didn't uh, express itself until three or four years after Chernobyl. This is a much more acute exposure, even though we're an ocean away from Japan on the west coast of North America or the whole, all of North America, because the, uh, I've talked to six people now with thyroiditis. One was a woman and the rest are men. All of them except one were under the age of 50. And uh, they reported uh, the symptoms of thyroiditis occurred, they noticed, within six to nine months after Fukushima. So this is uh, at least five times faster, seven times faster than um, more rapid onset than, than the people exposed locally to Chernobyl. So we have had a very, very serious uh, global exposure, uh, but much worse in the Northern Hemisphere, although now it's being reported, radiation is being reported off of Australia. Uh, I have a friend in Australia on the, um, near, near the west, southwest coast of Australia, and she told me her hair is falling out. She said the radiation levels um, along the beaches are much higher over the past four or five months. So the radiation from Fukushima is moving around the Pacific, and it's now below the equator. And it's continuing because there, there's been nothing done to contain the releases, and we have broken fuel from the explosions that's laying all over the countryside there. Isn't there a continuous release of iodine from that broken fuel as well? Well, there's, we don't know. I don't know because there's no data that's, being officially released, so I don't know what they're measuring, but um, they're still having daily problems with the reactors, with the spent fuel pools, and of course, uh, these releases into the atmosphere and into the, the groundwater and into the ocean are not going to end in our lifetime, Christina. Um, 
this is going to be centuries of, of uh, radionuclides escaping from that disaster. And since the Stuxnet virus was deliberately put into the operating system to sabotage the backup um, electrical generators, that was not an accident. The voltage in the generators was the wrong voltage for the reactors. That couldn't have been an accident. Um, these reactors were built to withstand uh, nothing higher than a magnitude 7 earthquake when Japan has a magnitude 8.5 earthquake every five years. The island of Japan, the island arc of Japan, is sitting on top of four colliding tectonic plates. It's one of the most prone, major earthquake prone uh, countries in the world. Why in the world would you put nuclear reactors there? None of this is an accident. 